Hello, welcome to 8.9 News. I'm Finlow Castain. With progress on world hunger in reverse, global food experts are calling for an urgent shift to more localised and resilient food provision to achieve the goal of zero hunger by 2030. Millian Bile is an IPES food expert and co-founder and general coordinator of the Alliance for Food Sovereignty in Africa. I asked him why local markets and local food chains are important globally. To begin with, they are accessible and they are close to people. Um, the food that you get uh, from this market is also diverse. Uh, diversity means resilience, diversity means health. So it's it's a healthy food that you get. And also they have economic and social benefits to local people. There are millions and billions of people who depend on these markets. I mean, in Africa, basically these are the markets that people depend on. You see? So they are, they are very much uh, important. Um, they are also resilient, you know. Um, they are resilient against shocks uh, in, in most of the cases. Um, because when things happen, when uh, local economic and social war and gets out of the control, people do rely uh, on these markets usually because they are very close to people. You mentioned that Africa still has lots of local food chains, while, of course, the global north has shifted to greater reliance on global supply. Do you think that the global north could learn from Africa and that it should actually start to shorten its food supply chains again? Hopefully, hopefully. I mean, uh, in so many, so many places, uh, they serve um, serve the people. I think one, one thing that we all agree is the future is unpredictable. It's a lot of unpredictability. Nobody has uh, predicted what has happened in the last three, four or five years. Nobody. We are in a crisis. And this unpredictability will increase in the future. So when you are living in an unpredictable world, what do you do? You have to learn how to become resilient. And these small, small and territorial markets are at the core of the resilience of the system. So, yes, they should. The report talks about resilience in the face of mounting shocks. You just referred to them there. What sort of shocks do you have in mind and what impact have they had on food availability where you live in Ethiopia and where you're working now in Uganda? Um, I, I can mention a few of them. The first is pandemics. You know, um, I'm not referring only to COVID because in the future also there, there might be other, other pandemics. And they... Um, are exacerbated by the global food system, uh, as you know. Um, so the, during COVID time, uh, what has happened is there was lockdown to varying degree. And uh, most people who lived in the urban area have suffered uh, because food comes from, from rural areas. But even for urban people, it's had, it's had the markets closer to people who serve these people. So we're talking about pandemics and shocks. And the war <clears throat> between Ukraine and Russia, it has affected every person globally. But um, the cost of oil and, and fuel and artificial fertilizers has, has, has increased. Um, so um, the cost of everything has shot up in, in, in Africa. So the, during this time, people started to rely much more on what they can get locally rather than on these expensive things from, from outside. So, that, so that's what the, one of the issues. And uh, the, the variability of the market, I can give you an example. For example, in 2000, the coffee prices uh, has, has, has really gone down, really. So there were so many farmers uh, in Ethiopia who depended on this uh, global coffee market. So when the global coffee market collapsed, their livelihood was affected. So much so that they started to cut some of these trees and sell them as woods to get uh, to get uh, food and money and fuel and whatever. So the, the vulnerability of this global food system is also a cause uh, for concern you know, in terms of uh, resilience. The report says that global industrialized food chains are exacerbating hunger and reducing resilience. How are they doing that? It, it is a question of accessibility. Accessibility, you know, there are only four co companies own uh, ninety percent of the food system now. Only four of them, you know, the uh, Archer Daniels, the Benji, Cargill, Louis Dairy. 
they 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 they, 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 so, so they, they control 90% of the grain production. So during what we have observed during the Ukraine in Russia conflict, they were speculating on grain. So people would, would depend on wheat, for example, in North African people, they couldn't get wheat for bread. So that was a disaster. So access is very much uh, important. And since they are controlled by the few, uh, the whole chain is controlled by the few, equity, the question of equity is very much important. So farmers couldn't control them. The autonomy and agency of farmers is hugely affected also because of uh, this market. They, they, are, they, are, they, cannot, they don't have a say in what they sell, where they sell, you know, this kind of things because with, because the, the food system is controlled by the, by this a few actors. It, and it also affects the diversity of food, as I said. The diversity, because they limit you to few uh, grains, a few crops, increasingly. So when diversity decreases, in the, the resilience of the system will, will decrease, it will have a, a health impact, and it will have also the impact of in terms of the what farmers can sell, what farmers cannot sell. So, so many, so many. It has an environmental impact, you know, so many impacts. You've talked about corporates there, but at an international level, are policy and funding mechanisms from international organisations such as the World Bank or the UN or the EU, are they generally improving the situation or are they actually making the situation worse? Well, uh, these are... Uh combination of actors that you you mentioned um, it's very difficult to put them in one basket for mm -hmm. example the IMF and the World Bank um, they actually pushed structural adjustments in so many African countries uh, market liberalization reduction of subsidies and privatization this has a huge impact uh, on Africa and uh, the trade liber liberalization has opened our our market for foreign goods and farmers cannot compete uh, with this one and um, it has also an impact on uh, food security on people because farmers start to depend on agricultural inputs that are coming uh, from outside and also when you open your, your your door for for trade for competition and whatever even uh, the EU also pushes to some extent uh, for that because they are entering into bilateral relationship with, with Africa for their own purposes, you know. It's not like um, an aid uh, or a friendship uh, agreement. It's mostly a trade agreement. So they want the market, the African market. You know, what does it mean for African farmers and food producers and for these local markets all over Africa? It's not an equal relationship, see? So that affects food security hugely. And also, what, what, the, 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 what, what's, uh, what's very sad is the trading happens uh, in few crops. Mm -hmm. So you have to destroy your diversity to focus on few crops, which are important for the outside market. And that decreases uh, the, the diversity and that exposes you to shocks. The report says that agroecological food systems and soil health are critical for maintaining environmental and economic resilience. What are the dangers to regional and global security if these local food systems and local soils fail? I think the first one will be in uh, decreased food security. It will decrease food security, uh, mainly because it decreases productivity. Um, it will increase on, on imports, you know, um, increasing number of uh, Africans are importing more and more food uh, because of the decrease in the soil quality and uh, the impact on the food system. Uh, environmental degradation uh, is very much important. Soil degradation, soil degradation affects almost everything. Biodiversity, impacts on biodiversity is huge, especially on agro-biodiversity or agroecological biodiversity. I mean, uh, pollution, uh, chemical pollution, uh, these inputs, uh, the chemicals in the pesticides and, uh, and artificial fertilizers would uh, pollute the environment. The climate crisis is exacerbating the climate crisis because when so the soil is bad, it doesn't even sequester enough carbon dioxide. So that's, that's also a problem. It has economic and social impacts. Uh, because it leads to social, I mean, uh, loss of livelihoods uh, 
It has also cultural impacts because the knowledge of the people, uh, the innovativeness of the people will, will decrease. Um, resource, resource exploitation, you know, there's huge resource exploitation and there's a scarcity of water that's happening also locally. So these are all the problems that uh, that would come, you know, because of the agroecological food system in soil impacts. Do you also see security impacts in terms of conflict and migration? Hugely, hugely. Um, I think in some extent it leads to uh, competition for, for resources. I mean, we, we see now that uh, pastoral and um, agrarian farm communities uh, are in conflict uh, all over all over uh, uh, Africa, and also land conflicts are increasing. All of it, it is tearing social fabrics, you know, um, in our community. So it can lead to so many so many things because we have an increasing number of people. Um, population increase is not by itself, uh, you know, if properly managed, not a problem. But if there is no management or handling, then it becomes a, a real, real crisis. So the migration is happening. A lot of people are going out for opportunities, actually. And just finally, Million, what policy outcomes are you and IPES Food calling for? One important uh, outcome uh, is I think we want the um, increase in, in investment in, in these markets. This uh, these are very critical markets. Now the focus is on on building supermarkets and whatever. But we need to focus on this small market. That's very much important. Uh, procurement, you know, procurement. There are a lot of public procurements. The um, school feeding programs are all over now uh, in Africa. It's increasing in Ethiopia in my country. So where does that uh, food comes from? So it should come from from this. This local market that's very much important. We need also to protect these markets from uh, uh, from corporate ownership. You know that's very much important. It's also local. You know some of these uh, um, urban uh, um, urban small markets, urban territorial markets, are claimed by rich people because they want to build uh, you know high rising buildings in whatever. So we need to protect them. But the most important in the long, uh, um, long-term solution is to really encourage agroecology. Agroecology is very much it has a social, uh, environmental, is a food security. It's it's a holistic system. So that encouraging that uh, agroecological system is so 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 critical. That's what we want. Uh, um, you know, our our decision makers. You know, everybody who's putting. Uh, money into African food system should focus on is on agroecology because of their agroecology. We see it on the broader um, sphere of food sovereignty, the local control of uh, markets, you know, healthy foods, the way you produce the healthy and sustainable way of produ producing your food are all important. That was Million Belay from IPES Food. More news as ever on our website, 8.9.com. That's all for now. We're back soon. Thanks for watching.